This is just an aside, but I want to point out something. Please. 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 Label your strain, especially if you're an experimentalist. Right? And the reason is, say you're an experimentalist and you measure a stretch ratio of 1.0 1.01000. So you measure the stretch ratio to six significant digits. Okay? If you compute those strains, what you'll see is that the engineering strain, you know, that's lambda minus one, is equal to 1.01000. And the logarithmic strain is equal to the natural log of lambda is equal to 0 0.00990. Okay. Turns out if you compute the difference, it can be as much as like 1.5%. Right? And 1.5% per 1% of strain, of 1% of stretch, right? And so what you're doing as an experimentalist, if you don't label your strain, is you're throwing away significant digits. Okay. What's wrong? Yes, 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 sorry. Zero point zero one zero zero zero. Right? So basically you went through all the trouble as an experimentalist to measure this to six significant digits, and then you don't label your strain. Well I can only trust your answer to maybe one significant digit because of the difference. And just to highlight this even more, let's look at an example. You guys see that all right? So this is an actual tensile test that I ran when I worked at Sandia for a very, very ductile steel. Right? So this is out 75% strain. The red line is the engineering strain, and the green line is true or logarithmic strain line. Right? So you see this huge difference in the stress values. Right? So if I tell you how strong the material is, you know, at 50% strain, uh, you know, the peak stress is 80,000 psi. Well, is it really, or is it 160,000 psi? Twice as much. Label your strain. 